Hey guys, cool by the way back. I'm Rick. Eric. Aaron. I'm Calvin. We are here for a first for us, I do believe, where we're going to be reacting to a documentary. I thought we were done with Band of Brothers. No. We said this last week. Oh, Lives yeah, on. I forgot. For I forgot. the documentary, which name is We Stand Together, The Men of Easy Company. It says We Stand Alone Together. You're right. I fucked Hurry. it up. Restart. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fantastic show. But I would like dread it sometimes because I knew it was going to be very heavy, mm. and I don't necessarily feel that today. But I am very excited to watch this. Sure, I feel like this one is going to be just as heavy. Yeah, yeah. I could see that too. And I feel like Band of Brothers too because it has like that connection with like real people that were involved in this stuff. It it just it has literally a puts heavier, them front and center. It has a heavier feel, right? Yeah. Like you can watch, and it and it's sometimes gonna be tough watch watching like Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, but you don't have like also like these old men who lived it also yeah. telling you this is what happened and this is how I felt and these in are that moment. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> like sometimes you watch war movies and it's like, oh yeah, war man, it sucks. But when you have old men like also starting to cry and tear up because of the shit they, they went to through, cry and tear yeah, up. It, yeah, it just adds more weight. Yep. Yeah, we got over an hour of that today, baby. <sighs> yeah. And then also because we watch narrative television all the time for work. I tend to watch documentaries at home, like for, for pleasure. Yeah. Now you're telling me I have to lose that now just because try it. everything else is it could, be, could potentially be something we react to. I don't watch any documentaries. That's I, I like watch watching documentaries. Yeah. It's I, very informative. There's always been that, like podcasts and stuff. I'm like I should do that, and I just don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I guess we are watching Ben Ten. It's not a documentary. Of course or, it is. Or a podcast. No, it's a You dog. guys should That's check right. out Kunk on Earth. It's hilarious. Kunk on Earth? Oh. It's on Netflix. Kunk. Down. Kunk. I didn't hear the K at the end. What is Kunk? Kunk. And the next thing I knew, I was laying on the ground in the snow, and I tried to get up. And when I tried to get up, I only thing I could see were the broken ends of my legs. Oh. And I thought my legs were gone. Oh. I was... Because that's all. The, my, the broken part, both femurs were shattered. Oh. And they were laying down here as I was in my back trying to raise my legs up. Oh. And I thought, I'm dead. You know, I'm, I'm about to die. And I said, uh, I said my act of contrition, because I'm a Catholic. And then the next thing I thought of was my mother. And uh, I thought, what, what she... What's she going to say? Because I was an only child. Give me those tissues, Eric. God damn it, man. It just started. In 1942, the U.S. Army assembled a volunteer parachute regiment that jumped behind the lines. Case. <laughs> Real shots of them. Within this unit was a company of men who found themselves at the forefront of the war in Europe. Parachute in Normandy on D Day. Or, I thought that was part of the show. You're saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you guys doing all stuff? I didn't know how much you were doing. Fought for the liberation of Holland. Yes. <sighs> on the front line of the Battle of the Bulge. Now I know what that is. One of those things I've always heard of. I'm like, where was the Battle of the Bulge? Title of my sex tape. Captured. Battle of the Bulge. It's kind of sustained. Oh, that looks like he looks like a bull. Like it, I believe. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. They got a good guy to play bull. Because I'm like, ah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Just to their story. Yeah, I thought it too. King stands alone. My name is C. Carwood Lipton. 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 I was born in Huntington, West Virginia. Grew up in Huntington. Good hair. Good hair. Good hair. Good hair. Good hair. My nickname was Babe. Babe. And my mother, she was a little Irish blood, red hair, fiery. Great woman. Oh, great she's got a great face. face. Born and raised in South Philadelphia, where the times were tough. Mom had ten children. So you had to work 
to survive. That's what it was. It's just survival in the streets of Philadelphia, that's all. Yeah. Oh, Ty, that's amazing. Uh-huh. I got a paper route. You know, that <laughs> five bucks a month I made, something like that. You know? <laughs> but it was at least something. There's a work ethic that the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch in this particular area are very proud of. You know these people that you're in service with, you know those people better than you will ever know anybody in your life. I mean, you know them right down to the final thing, you know. And that, that comes when you start your training, while that, that progresses. Man was like a heavyweight champ of the world boxers. Out of 100%, oh. only 10% made it. I thought it, it was going to die. There was no uh, holding back. You had to hang in there. You had to be tough. We marched 118 miles in three days. The training I got and the men I trained with gave me the confidence to, uh, to go into battle. We were just a bunch of ordinary kids when we went in, most of us. And a lot of the training was to build you up physically and mentally. Some of them lost as much as 40 pounds. But I didn't have nothing to lose. <laughs> I weighed about 130. If I'd have lost 40 pounds, I wouldn't have been big enough to stay. You know, they weeded out uh, so many. We, they'd be there one day and they'd be gone the next. They couldn't keep up with them. You understand? They were good men. So they tossing you around so much? Training. Yeah. Now he had the cream of the cream, the cream, cream of the crop. We packed our own shoots for the first jump. Nervous as hell, getting on a plane. You're asking yourself, what the hell am I doing here? It came time to stand up and hook up. We did. Coming down is great. Dude, it makes everybody different. Not like a bird flying in the air. Broke a foot on the first one. It dropped oh, 15 uh, feet a second. I can remember just like it was yesterday. 15 feet a second. That morning after breakfast, they marched us all out there to the. Uh, they're after you. There was a bunch of guys out there that had already made their jump, and they was all hollering, you're going to be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just seemed to enjoy it, so they went out. The landing was the hardest part. <laughs> Once I got out and the chute opened, I was happy to walk. You know, coming down is great. But I was small, too, and I didn't hurt myself when I hit the ground. Some of the big ones hit the ground like a ton of them. I'll say, I'm gonna hit the ground hard. <laughs> the thing you worried about most was your shoot. Did you pack it right? And you'd go through that, you'd pack it one day and jump the next day. You had all night to think about it. <laughs> oh, no, man, I can't. Uh, I packed all for a kinds trip. of ideas of what you might have done. Like double, already. triple checking. As you pull out of harbor and you pass the Statue of Liberty, will I ever be coming back? I don't know. So many people on that. Mm -hmm. 12 days. <clears throat> you know you're in the parachute troops. You're going to be jumping behind the enemy lines. What do you expect? You have no idea. But that'll make anybody standing search his soul for a few minutes. We were ready. We were ready. We had, we were stationed in England for about a year before D-Day. We had a lot of maneuvers and parachute jumping. Oh, he had the great voice. As long as I was in that plane and they were going to get me there safely out of that plane, that's all that I worried about. Mm -hmm. Everything else was up to him. Sure. We're saying like I have no control of being in this plane. Yeah. yeah. And if this plane makes it there, you know. Well, like the last jump that Nick's did, like the whole plane went down except for him and one other guy, right? Yeah, just in a couple maybe. I swear I was gonna kill every damn German I came across. And that's why I think they nicknamed me Wild Bill, because I did a lot of killing D Day. The British come up with us. They call them leg bags. They gotta be this big and you keep stuffing everything you can get your hands on in them. It's for the way 10, 15 pounds. By the time you get done, it's 40 or 50 or 60 pounds. Jeez. Everyone that jumped with a leg bag or supplies, they lost it. Everyone. Most of the paratroops that landed, 
to have nothing. I was one of them. It tore right off because we jumped at speeds of 150 miles an hour, maybe even higher, I don't know. And lower than we should have been. But uh, that wasn't bad either because you got the ground quicker. <laughs> sure. <laughs> went out the door, opened it. I looked to see if my parachute was open. You could see a tracer bullet burning holes through the parachute. And they told us that all you'll have to do is shuffle up to the door, throw that leg out, prop blast will hit it, and you're gone. Well, they were right. Only I was gone out and my leg was in. Oh. And I was hanging upside down, looking at everything down with my leg in the plane and everything. And all this happened in just a split second. Oh. And Paul rolled me out. Paul Rogers rolled, rolled me out. Oh. I just helped him out. I just picked him out. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> I had to get out. We, we just wanted to get out. So don't wait there too long, yeah. Threw him out of plane. And I slipped a little bit, and my chute fell across the power lines, and I hit that fence and fell into a, a farmer's garden. And that fence had, I'll never will forget it, it had glass on the top of it. And glass. Me up. And everything went, yeah, I didn't bother. I was me. on the fence. I did. I was down. Keep people from climbing over. I got over down maybe. with my gun. I hit the ground in a kind of a field. Oh. And we were way, way up looking at my map, and we wasn't anywhere close to where we were supposed to be. We didn't know where we were. We was plumb off our maps that they'd give us. That you memorize. So we had to make our way back. We knew that the beach was to the east of where we were. So we headed that way to get down to the beach to find out where the outfit was. These guns were pointed and flying right down on the beach. And the people out of the landing craft were trying to come on to the beach and they were flying right down on them. This battery of 105s was placed precisely where it should be to protect that causeway. Any troops coming up the causeway. Three miles away. We thought we knew where every foxhole was in Normandy. We knew where everything was. We knew it cold. But on this one, the Germans had moved in there and camouflaged it so well. We didn't know it was there. When they happen upon it, 50 Germans with 12 men. <laughs> mm -hmm. E Company was the assault company of the battalion. And we were been trained from special assaults and whatnot, special assignments. But they weren't aware of what we had. They didn't realize we only had 12 people. So we, we were. I'm surprised it's worth a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He hollers, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I'm sorry. I goofed. I felt like I kind of let him down, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. My God. It's beautiful when you think of a guy who is that dedicated to his company, to his buddies, that he apologizes for getting hit. But that's the kind of guy he was. And that's the kind each one of them was. They were all the same. I look well, upon them, each man with great respect, respect I can't describe. Oh, each one I know. of them proved okay. himself. Uh, I was so dumb that when I was that age. Could do the job. Remember the guy with the Luger? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but he was still trained, disciplined. Way more than me. We've been through Normandy. We've been through battle. And maybe if I had been harder, if I had done a little bit better job, there would have been a couple more men going home. said it, they had the most casualties, right, out of the fight. The highest casualty rate? 
Edinburgh, Scotland, 1944. Me and Johnny Martin. Drunk as a skunk. <laughs> well, Garnier and I decided we'd go to Scotland and uh, get a tattoo. Just as we got to it, I was maybe 150 yards away, that it blew up in our faces. Jeez. These rocks and timbers are flying, and they're falling all around you, and you can't help but think to yourself, my God, what a way to die in combat, to be killed with a flying timber. Uh, that we were that close. It uh, delayed us until the next morning. We wanted to get across that night, but uh, it took us till the next morning to get across. But once we got in, the, the Dutch, the, they, it was just marvelous, their, their reaction. They, uh, they loved Americans and still do for uh, coming in there and pushing the Germans out. I mean, you're, you're on the German occupation for four years, right? It's horrible. And you see paratroopers come out of the sky on Sunday morning. Yeah. Who are they? They're the angels. <laughs> <laughs> Their welcome was unbelievable. They couldn't. Where did they get the flags from? Made them? I don't know. So the doctor that counted the holes in me down at Nijmegen. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Nijmegen. <laughs> the first doctor that really counted Love the holes. Yeah, it said it was 32. Dang. <clears throat> that was our first. You got to remember what one guy did because he thought it was his job to do. And he took a shot for you. The exhaustion on these men, the physical exhaustion, affects their endurance to be able to cope. It is by stone, oh, it is. It yeah. is old Jack Woods, right? It is the woods. Sure looks different now, there ain't no snow. <laughs> this tree might have been replanted. I think if the trees look like they did in 44 or 45, we could get a better idea. That's it. Yeah. Town of Ford. Oh, this is definitely the area. This yeah. is definitely. Well, there's the town of Ford right over there. After the empty field with those cattle are grazing. Half a mile away. Yeah, we had an outpost set up, looking right into the town of Foy. And they had to watch everything going on. Because we'd come in here and go to sleep. We had our foxholes right over here. And the other area, and the other area, wherever we had to move out and dig in again. Of course, the crowds had plenty of artillery. Most intense I went through, buddy. Shell it. Most intense in the world. You couldn't believe it. You had to be here. You just dove in the hole and just pray. And that's it. If it comes in, you ain't going to know it. You ain't going to know it. We lost Muck and Pinkella over on this side. They were killed instantly. Show them. Direct matter. hit. Direct hit right by the hole. It made mush mince meat out of them. Georgie Lodge come over and he hollered, I can't see nothing of them. There's, there's nothing there. They were all gone, just disintegrated. Unmerciful shelling. Really? Yeah. Everything I think was shredded. Yeah, yeah shredded. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, not feeling. To me, it brings a lot of memories. Yeah. Memories of the men, the times, good and bad. A lot of memories. Dude, he's pretty good with this. Yeah. Older man like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Strong shoulders still. Only that the Germans had broken through. We went down, loaded on the trucks, and another truck came by with weapons, and they pitch out, pitch weapons up to the truck. You catch a weapon, that's what you got until you got the best. There you go, that's what you got. As it worked out, there's some men actually got on the trucks and left for Bastogne and didn't have a rifle. What? I'm not sure you're the same for the rest of your life after you've lived through them. You never forget them. There was one moment there that I remember vividly. I'll never forget it. One of the guys got hit in the arm with a piece of shrapnel, took his arm off above the elbow. 
and they were going to take him out. He said, get my wristwatch off my arm. And before he took him out. That always that stayed with me. I mean, I, a calm voice and everything, get my wristwatch off my arm. A calm voice. Joe said, Jesus Christ, what, what do I have to do to die? <laughs> he got hit real bad in the back of the leg. And he's out there and have a medic, and he couldn't, can't find a medic. I went out to see what I could do for him. Bongo, I got it too. Bongo. Bongo. That's the noise. I feel like 15 that means it should have been given <laughs> what conditions they were in. And, yeah, sure. You know, like. I feel like it should have been worse. <laughs> like it's there's so much, but no weapons, no arm, nothing. We found a a warehouse full of gin, <laughs> and vodka and stuff like that. What much whiskey? Those people don't like whiskey. And we took it all in <laughs> son of a bar. Had seven truckloads of champagne and cognac out of the wine cellars out of <laughs> the yeah. Eagle's Nest. Yeah. <laughs> So we stayed pretty well oiled for a oh, while. That, that champagne was good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I started great drinking picture. it one day and I drank it till about midnight that night. I went to the back, went to sleep. I didn't wake up the next day. <laughs> I made a two day of it. Thing out of it. And it tasted, didn't taste like it would hurt you. It tastes like ginger ale. That was the only time that I can ever remember that when I was in service that the whole company <laughs> fell out in her underwear. We didn't even have to dress, you know. <laughs> the Holocaust. And I had seen what the Germans had done to the Jewish race, and I'd seen what they had done to uh, the displaced persons, and what they had done in their occupation of France, and, and what they had done to their occupation in Holland. Belgium, so that uh, by taking over their homes for a few nights to uh, bed down my men, and uh, if they picked up a few trinkets, I had no problem. Nobody has ever taking their time to tell you how to handle a surrender. Jeez. We'll talk about that when we get there. Well, here we are. We got it. Now, how do you handle this? He presented me this pistol and offered his personal surrender. Which naturally I accepted gratefully. So that would be the end of the war for his men, and this is basically the end of the war for my men. And the significance is that it wasn't until later when he had given me this pistol and I had a chance to look at it carefully that I realized this pistol had never been fired. There was no blood on it. That's the way all war should end. With an agreement with no blood on it. And I assure you, this pistol has never, never been fired since I've had it. And it will not be fired. Wow, really? Each and Annual every reunions? one of you to our banquet tonight to celebrate the ending of a fine reunion. Thank you all for coming. And I want to extend the best wishes to all the men from Company E506. I love you. God bless you all. Thank you. The purpose the reunions serve is just to give us a chance to get together and talk to each other. We relive some of the Army experiences. But we have great respect, and you might say affection, 
for each other. The type of affection that you get when you've lived through many dangerous situations together and have learned that you can rely on each other. <laughs> if you see the people today, that bond's still there. The bond you can't explain. As soon as you see them, you know you're thinking of battles and thinking of it to yourself. The men stand out amongst each other. There's an intimacy that develops, and uh, like nothing that I've ever experienced anywhere, not in college, not, not in any, with any other group of people. We're a strange bunch of uh, dudes, as far as I'm concerned, to be this close after all these years. That's, that's the thing that gets me, is uh, I like brothers. I'm back in my youth now. When I get to these guys, I'm back when I went to service. <laughs> it's fantastic. I'd like to make 20 more reunions. <laughs> we had a lot of real good times in there. And those are the times that you really remember, you know. That's, a lot of those is what we kid each other about, you know, at these reunions a lot of times. And uh, then you had a lot of bad times. I don't believe there's very, very, very few heroes that came back from the war. They're still over there. Do you remember the letter that Mike Ranney wrote me? Do you remember how I ended it? I cherish the memories of a question my grandson asked me the other day when he said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said no. But I served in a company of heroes. so good that you did two things. Stay away from the water bridge, you darling. Now that's the song toy like. Oh, that's what we say. <laughs> you only needed a sizzle of beer. Too bad you were drunk because you were in great physical condition. You were <laughs> too peaked, you know. And too peaked. Too bad you were high as George of Pine, you know. <laughs> oh man, that guy had a good voice. Yeah, he did. Good song. Yeah, like we'd seen a lot of that sprinkled throughout the show. There was several moments where yeah. I'm like, I remember that from the show. Yeah, you know, the thing, even the last thing that Winter said about like I was in a company of mm -hmm. heroes. Yeah, like, I remember that from mm -hmm. the show. And, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's a few others too. Where I'm like, I remember those, but. Man, I wonder what their reunion was. The yeah, I know. Their reunion, like the year after this aired, you know, Band of Brothers. They're probably yeah. I don't, I, or the year the book came out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just, I just wonder what it was like watching that for them. You know, sure. Or if they watched it, or if it might have been too it. much for sure. Them, you know, yeah. yeah. Sure. Now there's parts when they're they're talking and telling stories, and I was. Picturing like what was happening in the in the show, you know, and the way they kind of portrayed it, and I can see where they get a lot of their information, you know, and then they're gonna try to show <laughs> what happened and everything, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy that Bastogne, like the fifteen, like I mean, it's a lot of people that died, but I feel like the number should have been way higher, given that they had some of them didn't have guns, didn't have ammo. Yeah, they were mm -hmm. freezing to death. Injuries you know, like fire. just all that counted against them. It's the fact that they even held them off. <laughs> yeah. you know, is amazing. <laughs> Let alone with not as many casualties as like you know D Day. But I mean, D Day was like a big invasion. Yeah. There was nowhere held in at all. Digging a hole and getting yeah. out. It's pretty well, good yeah, and like yeah, like the Germans were very prepared for D Day. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, and, it, and like they're coming in, they're in the position of holding. Yeah. As opposed to D-Day, is like we have to land in a place that's already occupied, drop in there and try to do what we can. I understand. Yeah. And some good. of them, I'm, I'm sure, as many easy companies as they lost, there's probably several from planes where you lost a whole plane 
full of yeah. Yeah, soldiers, you know? Oh, definitely. Not sure. just shots and artillery that are catching men and stuff like that, too. Like, you hit one plane and blow it up. <laughs> how, how many people are in there, you know? men there? Yeah. But, I mean, like they said, even the ones who didn't die there were never the same. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it's, it's, yeah, it's either you never you forget do. or you're never the same in a way, right? Yeah. You sure what, Kevin? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you would never forget being in a situation like that, of just being stuck there in a hole and having, you know, a few a few rounds of ammunition and the whole of the German advance in front of you trying yeah. to get through. I mean, when I try to, like, imagine, like, my clearest memories, they're generally... Not great memories, but I can remember them very clearly. Whereas my good memories kind of mix together sometimes. Yeah. And I can't imagine what it's like. You know. There's a few stories they had that I don't think they showed in the show, right? I don't remember the grenade moment that he was talking mm-hmm. about. where like he Eight grenades in four where seconds. He, where he pushed it up and then pulled it down yeah. and then peeked and there's a guy with a grenade. You uh, know? Like, I don't remember hearing that or seeing that part. Yeah. Like, that's a crazy moment. I can't imagine doing that. They're just, <laughs> yeah, just chuck them, you know? Get the hell out of Dodge. But, and then some of the people were just like, we're going to sit in, in this hole. Just hope nothing lands in your hole. Yeah. yeah. Nothing else you can do. Nothing. Just hope the hole you picked was the right one. Yeah. I was writing down some of the names at different points, too, to try to, like, see, like, okay, who mm-hmm. who are the people that we have here that we interviewed yeah. that I recognize from the show and everything, too. Bull, I think, only showed up once. I didn't. Right, I didn't see. Was, I didn't see him pop up yeah. very much. I don't yeah. think I saw him. Maybe right. More than once, or maybe twice. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad they had winners a few times. I like mm-hmm. getting to hear what his thoughts were on things, given that he was like leading. And I like hearing some of the men be like, "He made you know fast decisions and the correct one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. he, he must have because they kept succeeding. You know, he must have made some right decisions. Yeah. He just had that like sense of it. To have 12 men take on 50, you know. Yeah, no, and like they said in the episode in the after text, like they're still teaching that today in U.S. military tactics. Mm-hmm. That maneuver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I want shows like this for all the companies, for like all the countries, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, sure. I would be curious on like both sides too, a little the bit. The Germans too. You know, mm-hmm. I like hearing some, especially when they're course. talking about. Yeah. You know, like they say, like the SS were like the bad ones, willing to even do it against their own people and stuff, but. Yeah. Most of the Germans were just soldiers. They were just there, you know. They yeah. weren't necessarily trying to do the stuff that the SS was. Yeah, like and even the, if, you know, the German army shouldn't necessarily be celebrated, it should be remembered. Sure. Like, there's different aspects of it that I think, like, how did this happen? You know, what do Germans remember of this? Like, I don't hear that. Yeah. You know? And, like, you know, the Russians were fighting on the other side. They lost way more than we did. Probably. Yeah. Like. Hearing all those elements of what what they did and what around and everything and mm-hmm. they're I mean British and the French right yeah. like they were saying they were all going for the eagle's nest so it's like well where were they during different elements that we didn't see too you know I loved the, the pistol that was never fired yeah that was so good it's that a great story cool it's a great and you could story. tell he was like I will never allow this thing to be fired I'm sure I'm honor that, that that guy never fired this in the thing. show he gave it back to him didn't he I remember him being yeah. keeper sidearm yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, that was either, liberty. They, the same thing. either they yeah. changed it for the show, or there's another situation. Like, I don't remember it. Eagle's Nest being burnt down. It wasn't in the show, we, yeah. Well, we saw, show, like, yeah. two shots, I feel like, from, like, Hitler's view or whatever, but we never got to see the whole thing, and it would have been burnt out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I did enjoy them having, was it Babe and Garnier, like, going back to Bastogne, yeah. and, like, mm-hmm. standing there and talking. And them in their suits, you know. Yeah, I that, that was, was really cool. A nice. And hearing from the family members, yeah, as well. Yeah, Joe Toy's son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just like, I can't remember who it was, but them talking about like, you know, didn't even talk about it until the last five years. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, if it wasn't for it's a nice shifty, shifty, shifty power, yeah, like if it wasn't for them writing that book like a lot of them might have died with their stories you know mm-hmm. no one ever would have known them. sure Didn't well i mean is it realize that his dad killed people yeah is it a thing that you should right? talk about you know like what should you say about it you know you did some things you know like yeah. sure. you saw some stuff and if if the soldiers are already talking about how like 
those are things you don't forget, you know, and they always stick with you. Is that, is that stuff that you want to share to like? Do you want to burden your, your family kids with and this? Family and stuff. Yeah. Sure. I, mean, I don't know how you feel about that, but that's. Is it easier for you to forget about it and not dwell on it if other people aren't dwelling on it? Yeah. So I don't know. It can be a hard thing. You don't just to talk about things you don't want to. Yeah. No. I'm burdened by this. I don't want to burden more people. Mm-hmm. Though on the flip side of that, I did love when they were talking about how they when they go to their reunions, they. It, they they go back to the person like they go back to their youth they yeah. go back to so I'm just in my youth again I'm just I feel like that you know they uh, I'm sure a lot in their lives especially as the years go on or the years went on like they're suddenly like oh we're the old people in the room but there they're the young guys mm-hmm. together yeah. you know and they were all like a lot more bright happy more animated speaking to each other mm-hmm. that was really cool <sighs> yeah I, I like the idea that they do a reunion too mm-hmm. to bring Easy Company back together every year just to at least talk and see how everyone's doing and stuff you know sure yeah catch sure. up and it's crazy if nothing else then just having people around you that understand what you went through mm-hmm. yeah I wonder if you have like like the soldiers have a connection <clears throat> I wonder if the families grow a connection with, if they because I said like their families go too like as soldiers pass do the families still continue going sure because yeah. of the connection that their grandfathers or fathers or you know, great grandfathers or whatever had you know yeah I don't know yeah like they brought in Toy's son here like does he go to the reunion still you know since his father was a part of that yeah and like when will the last one be if it hasn't already happened yeah Sure. No, that's one thing I was thinking about too, because like, you know, I'm watching this now, not back in what, this was like, one or whatever yeah. it was when it came out. Yeah, this was so, 18, 19 years yeah. ago. Yeah, Honestly, you're looking. Even after the last one passes, they might still have that reunion just for the families. Sure, know? that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, do the families still come and I do they keep so. it going or whatnot? So, I don't know. What a great show, but yep. what a great story. Great to see these guys on here. See more of them. Mm. Uh, so heavy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I'm glad I watched it, of course. I'm yeah. very glad. It's just, it's, just a, it's a challenge for me. Yeah, it is. As Rick was saying, though, I think, like, having this kind of stuff is yeah. good to know, yeah. like, here's what happened and what people went through. And yeah. I love, the, like, the message at the end is, like, it's how all war should end with no blood. Yeah, like, <laughs> the know, cost like, of war is not just the people who died, but the people who came back. Like, yeah, everyone suffered, and there's you know the, the 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 damage done to the towns and stuff too is something that they need to recover mm-hmm. from first too, and mm-hmm. then there's all the people that were lost. And I don't know. I think when we watch when we watch like narrative art, right, like television movies and stuff, I'm always fascinated slash love the experience of trying to answer the question: What's it mean? Like, why why they do this? Why why they show it this way? Why was it? portrayed this way or drawn this way or you know why is this why is the music like this but when you watch stuff like this I don't think of that ever I don't think of why is it I think of what happened and sure I bet you these guys still have that question of like why why did that happen yeah. you know there's not a really good satisfying answer to that sure we're seeing more of what happened yeah. not necessarily but then why, you have, they, why they show it this way yeah. we're just seeing what happened but then you have episodes like why we fight you know, mm-hmm. the second to last episode. I'm yeah. like, oh, well, that's a pretty solid answer. Yeah, and I mean, you know, there's still, like, there's a lot more stories we didn't see in the show. Yeah. Right? Like, you yep. still have to pick and choose, even if you're doing everything 100% accurate. Sure. sure. You're they were still skipping choosing by. what you show and what you leave out. Yeah. You know, six or eight months at a time sometimes in some of those episodes. Mm-hmm. No. And then there's some stories they told here, and, like, that's not stuff that we saw in mm-hmm. the in the show itself either. Yeah. Whether it is for a little bit more dramatic effect or whether it's for we just don't have enough time to show everything. Or... A lot of times the stories you get from people don't match up and you got to decide which one to show. Sure. Well, yeah. I sure. mean, the stories when the, the soldiers do things that they shouldn't be doing. Like, yeah, who's the source on that? I'm sure there's some people being like, hey, we don't need to talk about that. Yeah. That's for us. That's not for you. Or just sure. people misremembering. Yeah, like, sure. You know, innocently. Or yeah. they got the wrong impression because mm-hmm. the battle was so chaotic or whatever. And yeah. Thought something happened when it didn't. The Battle of the Bulge was the largest engagement in American history. That's what they said. 600,000 600, Americans. That's so many. Yeah. That's what it said. 
No. Yeah, I mean, um, man, I'm trying to think of what like the largest battle of the Civil War was. Sure. That's our deadliest that's war. The, the bloodiest battles. Yeah. Because yeah. that's America's on both sides. Yeah. You know? yeah. This is just sheer numbers. It was another one of those like Battle of the Something, right? Huh? Is that what it was? Like you talking about the Civil War? Yeah. It, mm-hmm. Like one of the bloodiest battles was like the Battle of the Something. Is yeah. that what it was? Mm-hmm. Like, like, like Gettysburg or. I don't think it was like Gettysburg, that. was it? Um, I thought it was one more south of Custer or whatever. What was his name? It's like who's the, the big general? Isn't it like Lee? Big, like Lee, yeah. Battle of Big Hill That's or guy. something Hill. Maybe. I think we're just looking that up. Yeah. I didn't think what the big general name was. The one uh, on our side. That's Grant. casualties. Grant. That sounds right. Yeah. I've been to his house. Because Lee was on the other side, right? Mm-hmm. Little Bighorn is the Native American one, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, so it's not that. I can't remember. Don't Something Hill sounds familiar. But I mean, yeah, like in, in Gettysburg, there were more than 50,000 casualties but it doesn't tell me how many were on each side mm. I need to get my books I like gathering yeah. this here before like these guys have passed so that it's not lost I'm glad they did the book and I'm yeah. glad they did the documentary and the show yeah. and everything too yeah. um, I mentioned seeing the Pacific is mm-hmm. that what it's called the other one the Pacific, the Pacific. Pacific. Yeah. like yeah. seeing that as another side of the war and what those guys were going through and what they had to go through do you know because easy was almost sent there and then wasn't very nearly yeah so i'll be curious to see that at some point in the future too but at some know, point you can't it, it's hard to go back and like yeah. you can't go back and interview anyone with the civil war you know and yeah. get more information on that no. or anything sure. or, yeah so there's i'm glad they did this before that was lost you know yeah. right uh, like the battle of Vicksburg, which is one of the bigger ones had one hundred and ten thousand casualties americans or or soldiers yeah just well, yeah. Well, I mean, that's because both sides are American. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There's no winning civil wars. <sighs> yeah, maybe at some point we'll watch the Pacific. I think it might be a, an interesting... I think so, too. Another journey. I might need a break before we do it. Maybe watch something a little more wholesome. Not that this isn't... This isn't bad or anything, but I need, I need a break. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, no, I I need like a Doctor Stone after this. Yeah, where it's yeah. like the worst of humanity and the best of humanity. And bring yeah. it back from nothing. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, amazing. Glad it exists. Mm-hmm. Glad we watched it. Me too. I'm glad I waited to watch it with you guys. <clears throat> I'll watch it again. Yeah. Many times. I think people should. Yep. I think people should watch this. You know, just to see and get stories and see what had happened what it was like mm-hmm. absolutely alright that was us reacting to uh, Band of Brothers and it's follow up uh, documentary thank you guys so much for following along with us and especially thank you to the patrons at patreon.com slash blindweave that voted the show in and uh, voted the next show in which you can see that today on uh, the channel as well so mm-hmm. make sure you follow along with more television shows but if you see any more like this Put them down in the comments. We'll try to have a, uh, a poll where we can dive into different types of content like this. Mm-hmm. Be Definitely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> to the next show. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoy watching Band of Brothers with us. Uh, a lot of tears. A lot of, a lot, a lot. Right? A lot, a lot. A lot, a lot. A lot of uh, If you enjoyed the documentary side of things, too, let us know in the comments if yep. you liked watching us react to a documentary. First time of us doing something like this. So let us know. Subscribe. See you guys in the next video.